name is Artie Jones, and I serve as the executive director of Clearly College Park, where you will land in plain sight. And today, as the guest of Clearly College Park, I have Mayor Jack P. Longino, the mayor of the city of College Park. Welcome, Mayor. It's my honor to be here, Artie. Okay. What I wanted to do is I wanted to interview the mayor first and foremost uh, because you know so much about the city of College Park. You've served the community for um, a lengthy amount of time, and my understanding is that you're, you were born and raised here. Could you expound a little bit on yeah. your upbringing here in the city of College Park? I was born and raised here. My grandfather was the mayor 1914 to 18. Uh, I was elected 24 years ago as mayor, 28 years ago as one term as council. I've seen a lot of change with airport growth. College Park has been cut basically in half of population and land mass, all due to the growth of Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport. College Park has been able to turn around and, I like to say, take lemons and made lemonades. Uh, College Park has been able to redevelop themselves into a hospitality district and uh, that's a, a great uh, new tool for the city of College Park and what we've been able to accomplish in that arena. Okay. Well, that's a tremendous story. Um, tell me this. How did you start out in politics from the beginning? I mean, you said that your grandfather was the mayor of the city of College Park. When you were in school, did you say, okay, one day I'm going to become mayor? Or it, did it just kind of happened to fall in your lap or I mean what happened how did it you just it's got kind of emerged as I got older I'm a local businessman and uh, uh, I was single for a long time and I decided that I should be giving the community something back that had given me so much and so I just kind of stood up stepped up and says uh, I'll run for public office and uh, 92 and became council member and then in 96 I ran for mayor and been the mayor ever since for 24 years serving in the capacity of, of mayor um, it sounds like, you know, with all the great work that's going on in the city of College Park now, at least over the last five years since I've been with the city of College Park, tell me, um, how, how do you find time to, you know, balance family? Um, you are, you are a business owner and also be, be the mayor of the city of College Park. How can you find time to do it all? I call it time management, Artie. It's uh, difficult some days. Some days it's very easy. But uh, you work at it, and uh, you do what you have to do. Uh, I think it's kind of like raising a family. You've got to do what you got to do, and you make it work. You know, I've been with the city of College Park for five years, and we, you know, College Park has a very dynamic city council. You guys don't always see things the same way, but at the end of the day, you tend to be able to work together to get things done for the, the community. Could you tell me about some of those things that you are most proud of, those things that you've accomplished since you have been the mayor of the city of College Park? I think the most uh, biggest accomplishments that we've had is was moving the convention center from Sullivan Road to Camp Creek, building the uh, three new hotels, soon to be four hotels on that site, a new Class A office building, and uh, BMW on that corner, and uh, I think the greatest accomplishment was tying the ATL SkyTrain into the GICC site that then reaches into the car rental facility. You know, in, in the last 15, 20 years, we've had over a billion dollars worth of redevelopment in College Park. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of that was College Park's development, some of that's airport development in College Park. So I think it's huge to think that we've got uh, today two Class A office buildings uh, three open hotels, fourth be open this year, uh, be 970 hotel rooms on that one site. The new arena will open in November of this year, which will be a 3,500 seat arena with a partnership with Clear with Co uh, College Park Skyhawks to be playing in there. That playing in that facility, they are a developmental league for the Atlanta Hawks. I think that's a great accomplishment and, and great recognition to us, for us in the Southern Crescent. College, I've, I've worked in several cities uh, in the state of Georgia over my 19-year uh, career, and I've served in, as an economic development director in all those communities. College Park seems to be an outlier as far as a lot of the communities I've worked with. All the populations, the populations of the cities that I've worked in has been between 15 and 20,000. 
but College Park budget um, is four times as much as all the other communities that I've worked in. College Park has the second largest convention center in the state of Georgia. It's owned and operated by the city of College Park. At the same time, you mentioned about the SkyTrain connectivity to the busiest airport in the world to the convention center. And there's a lot of great things going on in College Park. Tell me, how does College Park do it all? I mean, this is just amazing that you have such a robust budget and economy here in College Park, yet you're a community of 15,000, of under 15,000 residents uh, that cover 10.1 square miles. I think it's proximity uh, to where we are. I think it's got to do with the highways and byways and naturally the Atlanta uh, airport, Hartsfield, Jackson. I think that that facility is, we know it's the largest passenger load in the United States. Uh, we know that uh, it's the largest employer in the state of Georgia. And when you bring that many people to a region, naturally good things are going to happen if you present it and present it well. Well, tell me a little bit about the relationship that the city of College Park has with the city of Atlanta. You know, Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport is, you know, half of that facility is in the city of College Park. And I understand that, you know, being a city government, uh, you have to work with sometimes the county government, sometimes other city governments. Tell me, uh, what has College Park been able to do with the city of Atlanta over the years that you are probably most proud of? I'm probably most proud of the SkyTrain ATL and the car rental facility we were able to uh, build back in the city when they moved it off of the, what I call the western end of the airport. And being able to have that SkyTrain come from the airport into our development is almost like you were no longer separated by I-85, the railroad, and I-20, I, Highway 29. I think those things are huge when you can put yourself next to the largest airport in the United States. And then also, you know, College Park being a, a major landowner, um, most small cities don't have 300, 400, 500 acres of land for development that they own uh, free and clear. Tell me, um, how does a city like the city of College Park come into ownership of so much real estate that is ready for development? That was very unique. That was most all this land that we have today was what we call Noids Buy It. Land came from Hartsfield Jackson Airport buying land where residential was noise impacted. Mm -hmm. And so for years, that land stayed off the tax rolls uh, owned by Hartsfield Jackson, city of Atlanta. And in our agreements and working with Atlanta, we were able to work out a deal where we would buy that land back from them. And now we're in control of what the destiny will be for College Park. Uh, the 300 acres that we hope to be uh, airport city is huge. Uh, I believe that if we get that development uh, done, as I believe will happen, uh, this city will never have a revenue stream ever again as long as we continue to build Class A type development as we have already started building. Okay. Well, tell me this. You've been the mayor for, you've been an elected official for 28 years. Yes, sir. Total. Tell me this. What keeps you up at night being the mayor of the city of College Park? I don't have a lot of time to uh, think about not being up at night. Uh, when I get home, I'm tired and I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> and so I usually am in bed by... 9 30 10 o'clock and i'm usually up by 6 6 30 every morning ready to go the next day and i always say the early bird gets the worm so i'm an early person and i believe that uh, you get your day started early and uh, great things will happen in that day yeah i've noticed that you know at city hall i would say at least four days a week early in the morning you're at city hall meeting with the city manager and you know walking around to the various offices greeting city employees and then you're off to your business and you're there all day long. And then sometimes in the evening you come back again and you're at it again. How do you find the energy to be able to do all of that? I think God provides that to you already. I, I have a lot of energy for what I need to do. And when I'm through, I'm ready to settle down and get quiet and uh, enjoy life. Current projects, the airport city development, 
It's approximately 400 acres of property, which includes a nine hole golf course. Um, most of the property um, can't be developed as residential as it once was. Um, and, you know, it's uh, considered to be a mixed use development. You know, how excited are you about this particular development? And what would you like to come to pass over the next three to five years with this development? I would love to see Class A development, that being uh, high-end offices, uh, medical-type facilities, uh, corporate headquarters from around the world. I believe that the state of Georgia has emerged ourselves into a bigger international market than we realize. And so I envision a good bit of international presence in this three to 400 acres. I believe in seeing... Uh, some additional hotels. Another thing that I believe we have to have is some entertainment. I believe when you start bringing this many business people together, they need somewhere to eat, somewhere to entertain themselves and their their consumer, their con customer. And so I think it's important that we have the correct entertainment mix within the developments that we're building. Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta National Airport, they have approximately 285,000 people that go through that airport on a daily basis, probably up to one third of those passengers originate their flight from Atlanta. Um, now, what is the goal of the Airport City Project and being able to capitalize off of those individuals that use Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport? I believe that already, already we know that uh, we're the fourth largest hotel uh, Glomerate hospitality in the state of Georgia. We know that we are running 75% in occupancy, which is higher than Atlanta. I know that that has a lot to do with Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. And that's people who travel who don't always get their flight until the next day. So we get to not only sell uh, room nights to people who come into the second largest convention center in the state of Georgia, but we are also selling room night to passengers that may have a layover for some reason at Hartsfield Internet Jackson International Airport. Clearly, College Park is the new brand for the College Park Business and Industrial Development Authority. Um, the Development Authority has been responsible for a number of projects that are very visible here in the city of College Park. You have the Georgia International Convention Center. You have the Renaissance Hotel. You have the Class A office buildings. You also have the, the Gateway Marriott and Spring Hill Suites Hotel. And now you have a, a Marriott AC Hotel that is actually coming you know, out of the ground, 220 rooms. The Development Authority uh, is not afraid to you know, get projects done, find ways to make things work. Tell me, you know, what is your policy to those developers out there in, in the world that want to come and do business with the city of College Park? What, you know, we, College Park wants Class A type development, period. We will not accept anything less. Provide for me kind of a synopsis of what type of business you want within the city of College Park and what developers should be um, prepared to provide the city of College Park if they want to do business in our community. I'm looking for medical, corporate America, uh, headquarters, international corporate headquarters, entertainment, additional hotels, and additional service type uh, businesses like uh, restaurants and uh, uh, drug stores and uh, uh, things of that amenities that will uh, not only help the, the traveler but will also help the citizens of College Park. Okay. Um, within the city of College Park, I know that a kind of a priority within the city of College Park is to be able to have more retail and also to attract restaurants and entertainment venues um, because we lost so many homes um, due to the airport expansion. A lot of the retail left along with those homes, and now we're trying to attract that retail and restaurants and entertainment back within the city of College Park. Um, kind of provide me with an idea of what you think that, that um, College Park would like to um, 
to to attract over the next three to five years um, as far as you know retail? I think retail is a is a great fix fit for the city of College Park because of the travelers and because of the second largest convention center. We have a lots of folks. Uh, I think I said earlier that by the end of this year, there'll be 970 hotel rooms on that one site. When you take that and broaden that out to we got a total of about uh, 5,800 hotel rooms in the city of College Park with more on the planning board. Those people need places to shop and do things just like a resident does. So we're looking for all the amenities from restaurants to uh, drug stores to uh, uh, small shops that may have amenities of a suit or a tie or a golf shirt. We're looking for folks to come play on our golf course, nine-hole course while they're here. You know, we're looking for great activities while you're visiting the city of College Park. I always have liked to say College Park's the biggest little city south of I-20. We may have a small population, but we got a great big business career. Mm-hmm. And the amount of business that we do in the city of College Park is huge. Uh, you already said earlier our budget is three or four times larger than any city you've ever worked in. Uh, our general fund budget is $33 million uh, with uh, – excess of funds uh, in reserves of about a third of that. And so we've been responsible in the business world to that we understand that being a big city, you got to be prepared for what can and might happen throughout the world. I've worked for many cities and it seems as though that whenever you're, you know, there are incentives available for economic development purposes that the cities just kind of lay it all on the line. And I don't feel some, in some in some instances that some of those uh, incentives were required by the business. In the city of College Park, it's much different. Um, um, in the city of College Park, you want businesses to be able to demonstrate that there is a need for incentives. Well, I think incentives, I'm a real believer that developers will ask for whatever they think they can get. And you have to hold a, to a tough line to what you should or should not be given. And any time that you're giving incentives to businesses, you're offloading those incentives from someone else. Could be the school system, could be the county, could be your own self. And you have to understand why you should be given an incentive and not just giving incentives for the sake of getting it. Lord, when, when we're the fourth largest hospitality district in the state, I don't think you have to give as many incentives as if we were number 40. And so when good things are happening, businesses that are coming, doesn't mean they won't keep asking for incentives. But you have to be very careful that you are a productive without, throughout the state, throughout the city, of what you're taking away from the rest of the region for incentives. College Park has 35 hotels. One's under construction. There's three additional hotels that are under contract right now that will be constructed. And it looks like that we may have in the neighborhood of about 40 hotels within the next three to five years, um, five additional hotels. Um, you've mentioned earlier that we that College Park is also the um, fourth um a large the fourth community in fourth place as far as being collecting hospitality tax dollars within the state of, of Georgia. And but yet at the same time we still continue to build more hotels and we have high occupancy rates. Um, do you think that this is going to continue into the near future um, or or not? I believe the growth in College Park will continue on for generations to come. I think Hartsfield Jackson will continue to grow. I think it's proximity to the world. Within two hours, you can reach most any destination you want to in the southeast. And I think that's huge. And I think being able to bring the highways for connectivity to the Hartsfield Jackson, as we have, is what continues to grow the state of Georgia and grows our region to be the hospitality king of the region. And I look at a lot of communities across the metropolitan Atlanta area Uh, as far as their growth in hospitality. 
we know Atlanta is number one. But when you think of little old College Park as being number four, and probably if you'd measured that uh, three years ago, we probably were number three. And if you include East Point and Hateful in our measurements, we are number three. And everybody knows that the Tri-Cities area being College Park, East Point, and Hateful are very close in proximity. So the growth measures for us is is huge to what's going on in this region. And, and I'm just proud to be here. Right. And, um, you know, because of your leadership, there's a lot of great things that have happened over the years. Um, speaking in economic development, there is a number of incentives that are available, you know, um, throughout the city. Um, I'm aware of the opportunity, the state opportunity zone, which is a, a $3,500 per job tax credit. If you locate your business within certain areas of the city, there's also the new federal opportunity zone. I would say that two thirds of the airport city project area is within the new Federal Opportunity Zone, which is a way is a is a huge uh, tax shelter that's available for you know investors. Then we have the Tax Allocation District also, which is another huge you know um, tax incentive for developers that want to do business in the College Park. And then you have the Enterprise Zone, and I can name countless others. Who was the mastermind behind being able to layer all of these incentives throughout the city so that College Park was one of the most competitive communities to do business in in the state of Georgia? You know, Artie, I'd always like to say it's all about me, but it's not. It's about the team. Most everybody knows me knows I'm about the team, the whole group, all the department heads, everybody working together to determine what's the best measure for us to correct, to attract as many incentives as we can attract, not only from the state, but from the federal government and through our own endeavors of just like the TAD. And those things are about teamwork and everyone working together to accomplish things that will benefit the businessman in a region that uh, most of this property that we're talking about, uh, of the 400 acres, have been off the tax rolls for uh, multiple generations. And when you take uh, the growth of Hartsfield-Jackson to have cut us in half, our tax revenue base was cut tremendously. And we have been able to emerge and come out of that doing very well. But we should have done much better. Uh, and the incentives will continue to help the Mrs. Man. And we talked a little bit earlier about incentives. That's the reason you need to understand all incentives that a business owner is entitled to before you start giving additional incentives that may take away from some other. Having served as an elected official for the last 28 years in the city of College Park, um, what advice would you have for anyone that is considering to serve in an elected capacity for a local government? I think it was well said already years ago, 28 years ago when I first ran. And I was told by a council member, you'll never understand what we do until you sit in these chairs. So till you walk the walk and you talk the talk, I don't think anybody on the outside really understands what an elected official really does. Uh, it's a very time-consuming job. It's a very uh, rewarding job for what you can accomplish by working with your team and accomplishing great things is uh, wonderful. But you've got to continue to work. You do not always get your way. And it doesn't matter who you are or where you've come from. It's not about uh, your way. It's about the group's or the team's way. And uh, you know, I think the best thing that was ever said to me was, you'll never understand until you walk these walks and talk these talks and sit in these chairs. And is, is, is family support, is that, kind of, uh, is that very important when you're serving in an elected capacity? Family support is a very uh, important issue in anything we do in life. Well, lots of people don't realize that there are lots of weeks that my wife doesn't see me again till Friday. Between her getting up and working and me getting up and working, uh, we go all week, and I may have a meeting every night that week. I try not to schedule anything on the weekends because I try to give that time back to my wife. 
and I don't think that's a lot to ask. There are times that there are things that I have to do on the weekends, and she understands. But it's a, it's another one of those things, time management and, and, and working. But a lot of times during the week, we each, we see each other when we get up, and we see each other when I come in at 10, 11 o'clock and say, good night, sweetie, I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, final question. In, in We understand, well, I, I understand, we both understand how government works and that there's a lot that goes on behind the scene to get things done uh, for the betterment of the community. Lots of times the community, they don't understand what goes on behind the scenes and why certain things are done. Sometimes they'll jump out there and criticize without knowing the whole story. What would you like to uh, end with for those individuals that may have some, you know, not understand fully why the city has done certain things. What advice would you have for them um, in um, in wrapping up? Artie, I think that uh, we all sometimes get way too critical of the elected officials who are making decisions when you only know bits and pieces. I think what you have to do is you have to look back at the proof is a proof in the pudding and is things been accomplished that have been great for the city. And when you take our $138 million budget and think that we have uh, over a third in general fund revenue in reserves, we're able to pay all the bills, look after the citizens and keep the, the services is as high a level as you could ask for in any region. I think what you should do is appreciate what you're getting instead of trying to piecemeal what you think you're not getting. Please ask questions. Please ask why. But understand that there's a lot of negotiations that goes into any project. And it's not just a whim that we just decide to spend $42 million on a new arena. We did a lot of study and a lot of talking before we did that. And I think that so often we criticize our elected officials and it won't always be everything that you want. I had a conversation with a lady as late as last week that she was disappointed in about four or five things I'd done in the last four years. I said, what about the 500 I did right? And when we got through talking, she says, you know, I've never thought about it that way. But we in life criticize so much and don't give credit for what has been accomplished good. Example, if you and I go to Longhorn and have a bad meal today, we're going to tell 10 people we had a bad meal at Longhorn. We don't tell folks that we've been going to Longhorn for the last 50 years and food's been good. We should always think that every experience that we have in life is not always going to be the best experience. But what was the outcome of the overall event probably was pretty good. Clearly, College Park um, is, a, is, is the branding arm of the development authority of the city of College Park. Um, and if you are a business owner or uh, someone wanting to come and live in the community or um, wanting to be entertained, um, College Park is the place to be. So please visit Clearly College Park where you will land in plain sight. Thank you.